Hi, I'm Professor Goins. In this video, I'm going to look at finding what's called an integrating factor in order to convert in a differential equation that's not exact to one that is exact. And then once it's exact, we have techniques for solving that. Okay, so let's say m dx plus m dy, that expression is not exact. Uh, we may be able to find an integrating factor so that when I multiply that expression by mu, it does become exact. So what function can I multiply this expression by so that I get an exact uh, expression. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at finding mu. All right, simplifying assumption, we will assume that mu depends on x only. And so if the above is exact, so if this equation or this expression right here is exact, uh, we could set it equal to zero to make just so I can refer to it as an equation. If that differential equation is exact, then it must have the following property. If I differentiate this function here with respect to y, that would be the same thing as getting the, the partial derivative of mu n with respect to x. So again, that means that this partial derivative is equal to this partial derivative. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that that's true, and then we're going to derive a condition on the function mu. And that will allow us to find the integrating factor for a specific example. Okay, well, what I can do is this is a derivative of a product. So I can use the product rule on both sides. On the left-hand side here, this, this would say take the partial derivative of, uh, with respect to y of the, of the first uh, factor, which is mu. So that would be d mu dy. Uh, times m plus, then I have y times the partial of m with respect to y, so mu dm dy, and then that would be equal to, so on the right hand side, again the product rule, so take the partial derivative of the first factor with respect to x, so that would be d mu dx times n plus mu times dn dx. And there's a couple of things that we can say about some of those terms. Remember, a simplifying assumption was that mu depends on x only. It does not depend on y. Therefore, this derivative right here is 0. Also, since mu depends on x only, I know that this partial derivative right here is actually an ordinary derivative. Okay, so then what we can do is we can take that equation and I can solve for d mu dx. So that's going to give me a differential equation in mu. All right, so the terms that we have is this one, this one, and this one. We have three terms that are non-zero. So what I'll do is let me start by subtracting this over. So that's going to give me d mu dx is equal to, so that over here I would have mu, all right, and then I've got this still the factor of n on that, so times n is equal to uh, mu partial derivative of m with respect to y minus mu times the partial derivative of n with respect to x. And then I can just divide by n. Also notice that mu is a common factor, so I can factor that out. And what this does is this gives me a differential equation to solve to find my integrating factor. Okay. So let's, let's take a look at this right here. Mu is the unknown function. So this is an unknown function. It's the unknown derivative. Uh, so this, again, is a differential equation to solve for mu. It's a first-order differential equation to solve for mu. I know m. I know n, right, because that's given with the original equation, m and n. So I can compute those partial derivatives. I can divide by n. So this whole part right here is an expression that we know. 
and hopefully when we set that up, when we plug things in there, we can, we can actually solve that differential equation. The other thing I want you to notice is that, remember that a differential equation is exact if the partial of m with respect to y is equal to the partial of n with respect to x. Notice how that's incorporated in this differential equation. If the equation is exact, then this partial derivative equals this partial derivative, which means that that's zero, which means that the, the ordinary derivative of mu is zero, which means mu is a constant. If my differential equation is already exact, multiplying it by a constant, it's still going to be exact. So we don't really need to do anything if it's already exact. This, this is not going to add anything new to it. But if it's not exact and we can solve this, then we can create an exact equation, which will then allow us to use the techniques uh, that we've learned for exact equations. All right, so let's take a look at a specific example. Let's take a look at the following differential equation. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the equation x squared y dx. And then plus, let's do x squared dy is equal to 0. So I want to do a couple of things with that. One, let's verify that that's not exact. Then we'll find the integrating factor. We'll multiply that through, and then we'll verify that the resulting equation is exact. Uh, let me look at how I wrote that for a second. Uh, no, this x squared y, sorry, that should be x squared dy. Sorry about that. That should be x squared dy. <clears throat> OK, so directions, part A. Verify, not exact. B, find the integrating factor. So I'll just say find mu. Part C, verify mu. makes the differential equation exact. Okay. Let's get rid of this stuff. Solution. Part A. Verify that the equation is not exact. All right, so that means I'm going to take the partial derivative of this expression with respect to y. Okay, so let's compute partial derivative with respect to y of x squared y. And that gives me x squared. And then I'm going to take the partial derivative of the coefficient of dy with respect to x. So the partial derivative with respect to x of x squared gives me 2x. So the x squared and 2x again are not the same. Therefore, the equation is not exact. And let's see if we can plug things into this differential equation here and see if we can find the integrating factor. Part B. All right. Again, d mu dx 
uh, where is the derivative of the unknown function, mu is the unknown function, but then everything else here we can substitute in. I know the partial derivative of m with respect to y is, partial of n with respect to x, I know n. So partial of m with respect to y is x squared. Partial of n with respect to x is 2x, so I've got x squared minus 2x. And then I'm dividing by n. Remember that n is the coefficient of x squared, or coefficient of dy, which is x squared. And then let's simplify and see what we can come up with. Okay, so I've got d mu dx is mu times, well, I can factor out an x and then cancel. So this would give me x minus 2 over x. And then this is a separable differential equation. So I can bring mu to this side, giving me d mu over mu. And then on the other side, I would have x minus 2 over x dx. Of course, this right here, we can separate the fraction. So this would give me d mu over mu. x over x is 1 minus 2 over x dx. And that's easy to integrate. On the left-hand side, when I integrate this, I'm going to get the natural log of mu. Ignoring the domain restriction of mu has to be positive, uh, so absolute value. Uh, on the other side, I take the antiderivative. I'm going to get x minus 2 natural log of x. And then I'm going to solve that equation for mu. Okay, so I can solve this, but for uh, solve this for mu by taking the expon exponentiate both sides with the natural base. This would give me mu is equal to e to the x minus two log x, which is e to the x, and then e to the negative two log x which is e to the x. And then if I, this negative two here, I can make that an exponent. So this would be e to the natural log of x to the negative two, e to the log x to the negative two, the e and the log cancel, giving me e to the x, x to the negative two, which is e to the x over x squared. So this right here is mu, and that is my integrating factor that I need to make the original differential equation exact. So let's verify that. Let's multiply the original differential equation by this integrating factor, verify that it's an exact equation. C. I'll take again mu times x squared y plus mu x squared, oh, x squared y, sorry, forgot to write the differential part. Okay, so I've got mu x squared y dx plus mu x squared 
dy is equal to zero. So that looks like the equation I had at the very beginning, the mu m plus mu n, uh, mu n, mu m dx plus mu n dy equals zero. And the claim was that that was exact. So let's see what happens here. If I replace mu with what we just found, that'd be e to the x over x squared times x squared y dx plus e to the x over x squared x squared dy equals zero. Notice the x squareds are going to cancel from both of those. So this first term here becomes y e to the x dx plus uh, e to the x dy is equal to zero. And now if I think of this term here as my um, m, and I think of this term here as my n, and we take the partial derivatives, we get the partial derivative with respect to y of the first factor, y e to the x. Of course, that's e to the x. And then when I take the partial derivative with respect to x of the second factor here, this coefficient of the second differential, we also get e to the x. Those two terms match. Therefore, the resulting equation is exact. And then we can use the technique for exact differential equations to solve this one. And that would have the same solution as the original equation.